Welcome back to the Football Terrace. Hit the like buttons. Make sure you're subscribing and join that notification group chat so you don't miss any of our content that we release, whether it's live, uploaded, or anything else in between. Loads to talk about this morning. And as you all know, the transfer window closes, but transfer activity, stories surrounding it, and the truth about other deals always emerges. Clubs start working now on January deals and deals for next summer. And there's a few really interesting updates regarding Chelsea, a Man United signing that may still happen this window, and a done deal being pushed to Arsenal, the Arsenal are fighting hard to stop happening, plus updates on Isak, and we're taking a look at the situation with Osterman as well. So as I say, hit the like buttons and make sure you are subscribing, and we're going to talk Arsenal, we're going to talk Man United, but I wanted to start with Chelsea. John Obi Mikel, obviously a Chelsea legend, spoke about Osman's deal to Chelsea and why it collapsed. He says, yes, we were very, very close. Uh, I put it that way. We were very, very close. There was just moments away from getting the deal done. But it was just slight issues, slight little problems that we just couldn't get over the line. And speaking about running out of time, essentially, and this was on his podcast. He speaks and alludes to Chelsea and Oseman coming to a financial agreement, which, and I'm going to be fair, open and transparent, flies in the face of what the mainstream media have predominantly said up until this point, that the problem was that Chelsea's offers were too low and the player didn't accept. I think when you start to hear the truth of these stories flesh out, what you actually get is a combination of both. If Chelsea would have offered the better money earlier, they would have got the deal done. But their negotiation tactics essentially failed this time round because by the time they got the deal, there was just not enough, there was just not enough time to get a medical completed, the paperwork done before the transfer deadline window shut. But what Obi Mikel speaks about, which I think is really important, is that Chelsea will continue to monitor, talk, and look to move back in for the player in the January transfer window. And by then, of course, Chelsea will hope to still be in the Conference League, still be in the running to make it into the top four. And from their point, they'll be in the FA Cup in January. It doesn't start until January for the big Premier League clubs and maybe even in the Carabao Cup still. So, look, unless Chelsea have a disastrous opening three to four months to the window, this may not be the end of the world. But I think it gives real encouragement for Chelsea that they can go out in January and sign this star striker, which I think... They know, I know, you know that they really do need. But Chelsea fans, I want to gauge your views and opinions on this. Are you frustrated that you just didn't go in for a bigger offer sooner? Or are you happy that the club st stuck to its guns, but you just narrowly missed out in the end of completing this deal? Uh, give us your thoughts and give us your feelings. Now, staying in London, big report from TalkSport today that Arsenal are unwilling to let Jorginho leave the club Despite Galatasaray being interested in signing the 32-year-old before the, tran the, the Turkish transfer window ends. And I've still always felt any clubs that are governed by UEFA, FIFA, especially UEFA because we're all in the same you know, European community in, in relation to football, all our windows should shut at the same time. Now Galatasaray, along with a few other clubs, in multiple reports are pushing hard to sign Jorginho. This is the deal which, again, when you say it out loud, Arsenal are never going to let this happen. Arsenal were never going to let this get over the line. Arsenal were never going to allow another midfield player to leave. Not with Declan Rice being suspended, not with Moreno being out for what they believe could be eight to nine weeks. He's already a week or two into that, to be fair. But you're talking maybe not until the next uh, uh, international break ends before he returns. It just isn't happening. It isn't happening in any way, any shape, or any form as far as I'm concerned. And Arsenal are shutting it down. And they're being tough and they're being strong. Just as, just as we saw Arsenal do with Calafiori. And I did see a number of people... I actually saw some Arsenal fans kicking off about that, which I thought was very strange. I saw Arsenal fans say, Oh, I thought people said Arteta was a nice guy. Now he's stopping people playing for their country. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. I thought you're an Arsenal fan. Surely as an Arsenal fan, you want what's best for your football club and not any other nation. Even as an Englishman, if Kobe Mainu had a slight knock, I would want Manchester United Football Club to make him come home so we could assess him just in case it's a little knock. We don't want him running to the ground and then he picks up a bigger injury. I'd always want that, but that's just me. 
each to their own, I suppose. The other news surrounding Arsenal relates to Alexander Isak. And this is key for one big reason. Arsenal didn't end up going in for a number nine. The more I watch Victor Jukoles, the more I think there's a special, special player in there. Of course, he's not playing at the highest level of the game in, in Portugal. It's a very good league. It isn't one of the top four, but it looks very, very good. It looks amazing on international duty as well. But it's his compatriot. It's his compatriot that Arsenal are linked to again. And according here to uh, uh, Team News and, and Tex, I've been told that Alexander Isak will be very, very high on Arsenal's list. He is definitely someone to expect them to revisit next summer. If Newcastle don't get Europe, you imagined he'd be angling for a move. And the reason why I think this is important, and this is more of a debate element when it comes to this story. Throughout the summer, we had Arsenal fans state, I'd like Jukares, I wouldn't mind Osimhen, but I really want Isak. I want the club to wait for Isak, even if it means a year without that prolific number nine profile that we want. It's about getting the right individual as opposed to someone who's second, third or fourth choice. I understand that logic. I really do get it. There are other Arsenal fans who believe, no, this isn't the right approach. Yes, the club may believe that Jukodes is one step down or Osiman is one step down. They're equally as expensive, but we should still have gone and got them. They would still score us those extra goals. They would still score those 50-50 chances. Those 25-75 those, those, those chances. Those opportunities that are on XG are really low scoring, but those prolific goal scorers have the ability to put away. There are some that believe this is a mistake from Arsenal to essentially wait another 12 months until the summer transfer window of 2025 before making this move. And I want to ascertain, I want to gauge, I want to understand your opinion on this let us know in the comments section below whether Arsenal have done the right thing or not I believe both sides of this argument hold merit and I understand both elements and if Arsenal go on to challenge again win a trophy this season play beautiful football and progress maybe nobody will complain that's not true that's not true whatever they do however far they get unless they win the Prem or the Champions League you'll probably find they'll still be if they win the FA Cup get to the final of the Champions League and finish off the top of the table by two points, you'll probably still find people say, if we'd have just bought Yulkades, if we'd have just bought uh, Osaman, we'd have probably got over the line and won even more. You can always make that argument, but who knows? Um, look, I want your views and I want your opinions on it, people. Leave us your comments below. Now, a story relating to Man United and Newcastle is that both clubs are still interested in signing Rabio, who is still... A free agent. The player has turned down opportunities to go to Turkey. That's according to Fabrizio Romano. And both Newcastle and Man United are still interested. And I can't speak for Newcastle fans. I can't speak for Man United fans, to be honest with you. I, I speak for myself. But I'm not opposed to this deal happening at Man United. I feel our midfield is still lightweight. I'm not saying Rabio again is a player that's going to come in and we are fixed. We are ready. We're at the next level now. I like the idea of young Collier coming in and getting games and opportunities. I do. But there is so much football to play this year. There's additional Europa League games, two more of them. We want to be able to rotate for the cup competitions. And I just feel that a short to medium term deal for a player of Rabiot's quality and experience, as long as we're not paying him dumb money, 250, 300 grand a week, I feel a deal for a player like this could be really, really key. Bringing him in on, say, a two-year deal with an option to extend, 150,000 a week, to be a member of the first-team squad, I think could be really a really key and important component for Man United. Newcastle the same. I think he, this is the thing. It depends on what club you are. I kind of get why Arsenal fans would say, well, versus Partey, Jorginho, Rice and Mourinho, he doesn't improve us. I, I can understand City fans having this, this take. I, I get Chelsea fans not wanting him with the, the abundance of talent they have, whether it's fulfilled yet or not. But I think if you're a Newcastle fan, if you're a Manchester United fan, it, he may not be your favourite player. And I know that we want better in future. But he certainly would improve our midfields. And I, th I feel that being a free transfer, I just think it, it feels like a no-brainer to me. It feels like a no-brainer to me, personally. 
You may disagree. If you do, let me know why in the comments. If you get where I'm coming from, again, I want to hear from you below. As ever, I want to thank everybody for tuning into the Done Deal Show. Make sure like buttons are hit before you leave. Get that done. Yes, I'm talking to you. I know you're watching it on your TV screen and you've got to pick up your remote and do something. I know it's not like touching a screen on your phone, but just pick your remote up now. Get the like button hit for us. It means a lot. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you soon. Peace.